that is before us. You know, it reminds me of so many of us are still acting like the five foolish virgins. Y'all remember the ten virgins? There was five foolish ones and five wise ones. And then you got the five foolish ones that didn't have oil in their lamps. They were unprepared. They were believers who were disobedient. That's who they were. The lamps can't shine without oil. They can't shine. And in order to obtain oil, something has to be crushed. Something has to be crushed. Uh, that, that, that flesh of yours, the, the things that we want to do when we know we should be praying, when we know we should be reading our word, when we know should, we should be worshiping God, then we're going to have to crush that, that, that physical man, that, that man in the natural. We're going to have to crush some of those things and say, okay, look, today I can't go, I can't go hang out with you. Uh, I'm looking dead at it. I can't go hang out with you, Elder Sheila, today because I have to sit before God. I need to sit before God. I need to be able to read my word. We cannot give people what we do not have. You cannot, you can't even fake it. You can't fake it. We get here and it's too difficult for us to even focus on praying together for 15 minutes. We get to praying for 15 minutes and let the pastor get to praying for a whole hour and we like, man, I'm just going to come on, keep it real. Oh, man. We can't, but we say we praying at home. So why is it when we come into the body of Christ that we can't tarry Together, God, Jesus said, can y'all not tarry with me for just one hour? But we'll pick up those gadgets and we'll have the nerve to flip through those phones for an hour after hour after hour. And we bored when we come in here because we, the same God, we said we're going to be praising and worshiping when we get to heaven. We're going to be worshiping all day long, praising and doing all these things. And down here, we can't even do it for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. We are, we, 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 we looking like, okay, you didn't already pray. Now we didn't already done that. Next thing, please time to move on. We had a praise team trying to usher us and to worship together on one accord, but I've raised my hands and clapped my hands enough. I'm tired. No, y'all didn't ask me now. I'm tired. Now I'm sitting there looking at them like what y'all doing. Oh my God, help us Lord. So by the time the word comes for us, we sure ain't ready. We ready, we ready to go now. The praise team the sung for an hour, and we didn't pray for 15 minutes. And so now we're looking at the pastor like, hurry up and finish already. And besides that, you've already been speaking for 20 minutes. This is stuff, you, your, your attention span. Our attention span, they say, is 20 minutes. But we can give everything else more time than we can the word of God. So remember when I asked you earlier, am I my brother's keeper? So my prayers, my worship, and walking out the word of God should be seeching. It should be seeching my fellow brethren. It is to implore you to do the same thing that I am doing. So that being a part of the body has also has to take, I have to take responsibility for my fellow brethren and my sisters and brothers in Christ. Are we not all a part of the same body? We all have the same responsibility to one another to encourage, but it's difficult for us to do that if we're not doing it outside of these four walls. Remember what Paul wrote uh, to the Christian church at Rome in Romans 12, 1 and 2. He said, I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you would present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He said, I beseech you. He says, I am begging you. So while we are in this sanctuary, while we are in here fellowshipping together, we should be beseeching our brethren. We should be pulling them along. We should be encouraging them. So the only rational response to God's mercy and giving us eternal life is to give him our lives as a living sacrifice to use for his purposes right now. So we are to be displaying that even while we are in the body of Christ so that we are encouraging one another it should not be somebody that uh i think about I'll, I'll say this when my foot was hurt y'all know my foot was hurt for like two weeks yeah. and i did everything that i could immediately once my feet started hurting to ensure that my feet was okay yeah. 
I went and got the shoes I needed. I, you know, had some people in the body of Christ. Sister Ora offered me a cane. Brother uh, Pastor Lee and Sister Lee brought me their crutches. I went and got the shoes. I went and got the soles. Uh, anything that I needed, it wasn't anything that was too expensive in my eyesight for me to, in order for me to get my feet together, I, to, to, to make sure that my feet, my foot that is on my body was healed. Same thing in the body of Christ. When we see one hurting, it shouldn't be anything that we're not willing to do in order to assist and help one another. But we can't give it to them because we don't have it. We don't have what we're trying to give away. So in essence, if y'all remember, if y'all know, it reminds me of community economics. If you know what community economics is, it's the people coming together, doing whatever it is that they got to do to make sure that inside of that community, that that community survives and makes it and does whatever it is that they need to do in order to be where they are going to be at. Are we doing that with one another? Are we doing that in the body of Christ? Are we doing that when we see somebody just sitting there looking at us and the praise team is worshiping? Pastor, they never told you that you couldn't get up and move and go over there and encourage the person that is still sitting there looking at you saying, Sister, are you okay? Stand up, worship, raise your arms, praise God with me. Let's give God some glory. You know what I'm just saying? But we, we don't do that because when we come into the body of Christ, most of the time what we're concerned with is I got mine and that's enough. So I, didn't, I came in here praising and worshiping. I came in here, I got the word, I'm good now, and I'll sit down. But do you think I would have treated my own foot like that that is connected to me? on my body that I, as long as everything else was okay, I didn't care about my foot. I, that's a lie. I did everything I possibly could to make sure that I was going to be able to walk again and that I could put on another shoe, that I could do whatever it is that I needed to do with my foot. Same thing with us. We should be, be beseeching one another, encouraging one another uh, in the word of God. So in the essence, we are made up in his image, in his likeness, to bring him glory and to honor him. And we can't rule over or be an example to anyone in the body of Christ if we're not willing to put in the work required to display the image of Christ. It's hard to display a reflection of something that I'm not even remotely familiar with. How can you display who Christ is and you're not even familiar? You don't even know him. You know of him. You know of him. Because if really, if we were displaying, reflecting that as being the body of Christ, we'd be doing a whole lot. Wouldn't have to be the pastor or the first lady reaching out to everybody. Each one, reach one, each one, teach one. We would, we would reflect that. We would reflect that. It may be you just calling one person, but all of us should be calling somebody that we know that is, that is missing or that hadn't been here for a long period of time for some, you know, for some, whatever the reason may be, we should be reaching out. It shouldn't just be particular people reaching out. And it don't have to be the one that you always feel like you were the closest to. You know, we are the body. We are responsible. We are supposed to be reflecting that of Christ. So it is. It's hard. If you're not familiar with who God is, it's hard. I said earlier in our relationships in the natural, whether it be marriages, which is supposed to be representation of the, uh, our relationship with Christ, is what marriage is, our children, our family members, our friends, it is a reflection of our relationship in the spiritual. I don't care what you say. It is a re it's a re reflection of it. Because we're supposed to display that of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, let's create them in our. We are the only creature that he said that if you go back to the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, he said, let, let us create man in our image. He didn't say, let me create the birds in my image. Let me create the trees in my image. He said, let me create man in our image. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are the only one that were created in the image of God, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when someone tells you, like I said, you look just like your parents, do you? Do you look like your parents? Do you look like your father? Do you really? Do you have your father's eyes? Are you intelligent like your father? You know, all of that. Uh, we'll take that as a compliment when you talk about that with your own children. But really, when they come all the way down to it, God is just loaning us, our children, 
just for a short period of time and loaning us. He's given us the responsibility as an individual. God, God loves us that much. He said, I'm giving you the responsibility as an individual to be responsible for somebody else. To be responsible for, do you know that is a privilege? It is a privilege. It's even a privilege in the body of Christ to reflect that image and said, I love you that much. I created you in my image. Now I'm going to give you a mini this person. So now you can even bring them up in the admonition of the Lord. And we can't do it because we don't have it in us. Because we don't know who our father is. We don't recognize that we are made in his image. So when the praise team is up here, and I'm just, I'm because this is for the body. You know, I'm just saying this is as personal as well as for the body. So when the praise team is in here, um, they're in here and they're praising and they're worshiping and all of that. They shouldn't have to tell you to praise and worship God. And I'm not saying, I know sometimes people have a hard time standing for long periods of time, but they standing up here sometimes for hours. And we just sitting up here just looking at them like, hurry up. It's like watching paint dry. And it's like, are we not the same people that say we serve the same God that are supposed to be reflecting the same image? And we got the nerve to be sitting up there just looking at them like, hurry up already. So you have to ask yourself, really, why are you coming into the assembly of the saints? Truly, why are you here? We're supposed to be here edifying, lifting each other up, encouraging one another. But it can't just be the same people all the time. It can't just be the pastor up here saying, okay, y'all get up now. Come on, clap your hands. Why? It can't just be him. Why can't it be you and the person that's sitting next to you and you telling them, okay, stand up. Clap your hands. All right, open your mouth. Why can't you be a part of that? You are you are responsible. Are you not your brother's keeper? Are you not your brother? This is a hard, this ain't this ain't nothing I know that's gonna make you clap and make you happy. But I'm telling you, it was all over me. And so since it was over me, I'm sharing it with you. So y'all can get some of it too. So I'm just saying it's it's we have to ask ourselves and stop and wonder. Are we truly reflecting and being who God created us to be? Yeah. Father, Son, and Holy, uh, Holy Spirit, are we reflecting his image? Are we? Are, ask yourself, are you? Don't let me go over 11 o'clock to 11, y'all. Make sure somebody give me some time. So it's in the same way that we say that our children are a reflection of who we are. We say that, you know, we love it when people tell us that they look like us. We love it when people tell us that they speak like us. We love it when they say, oh, your child is intelligent like you are. Oh, your child this, your, we bright, we lighten up. And so now we need to make sure that we're displaying and, uh, and actually being that same person inside the body of Christ. That, oh, I love it that your sister in Christ, uh, Minister Regina, is looking like you. She's smiling like you. She got that light, that same bright light that that you said that that God is shining within you. Amen. So we have to be able to do that. It says uh, the Bible says that we were born again, John 3 and 3. So when we became a Christian, we were born again. Uh, so we should be reflecting the image. God gave us a new nature. Um, while we still struggle with sin because we live in an earthly body, you still have been changed into a new person internally and you are no longer continually living in sin yeah you might mess up but we should still be reflecting that of christ and still should be moving forth so in order to have our father's attributes it requires us to spend time praying worshiping and reading the word and trust me we can do a whole lot of it so we are also want to be reflections to show not only in the world, but also in the assembly of the saints. Because we always talk about how we're trying to go out into the world and save the world, but we in here looking like a bunch of zombies. You know, we won't raise our hands. We won't open our mouth. We won't do anything. We got to be encouraged to do anything. So if we have to be encouraged in here to raise up our hands and to open up our word and to do anything else, how are you encouraging somebody else out there? It's impossible to be doing that. So be the, to be the reflection that we're required to be, since God created us in his likeness and his image, he's saying, when I move, you move, just like that. When I move, you move, just like that mean, and that was the title of this uh, too. I forgot to tell y'all. But when I move, you move, just like that. So when he move, you move. That's how I go. When I move, you move. 
When I move, you move is what he's saying. So you don't have to be encouraged by nobody else since you are the reflection of who Christ is. Shouldn't another person have to stand up here and tell us to clap our hands, to open up your mouth, to raise your voice, to stomp your feet, to pray, to do anything else if you are the reflection of Christ. So when God moves, you move like that because you are his reflection. It's like looking in a mirror when you look at no matter how you look at yourself, whether you turn to the left, to the right, behind or whatever you do it that reflection still goes with you so when he moves, you move just like that you are to be a reflection of who, of who christ is so as long as we are here today there is still a chance and an opportunity to the, be the reflection of god to be his reflection so after remember i told you about moses and i'm gonna just touch on that real quick after 40 days and 40 nights of moses communing with god in exodus 34, he, he was descended upon Mount Sinai. He had no idea his intimate connection with the Lord actually changed his appearance. He didn't even know that it changed his appearance. He just know that he had been before him. So when he came down, the Israelites could tell. They could tell that Moses had spoken with the Lord. So when you come down, when you come out from reading your word, when you come out from worshiping, yeah. when you come out from doing all of those things, the people should be able to tell that you have spoken with the Lord. You may not have noticed it, but they should be able to notice it. And so he continued meeting with God and influencing the lives of those that were around him. So if you will continue meeting with God, reading your word, worshiping, sitting before him, taking it in, that when you come in here into the assembly of God and to the assembly of saints, then everybody around you should already know that you have been communing with God and you ought to be able to influence the person next to you. So I'm going to encourage you today, don't let the man of God or the praise team come out here and tell y'all to uh, stand up on your feet or clap your hands or open up your mouth or even if they're praying for you to get in there and start praying too, don't let them tell y'all that no more because now when you know better you do better and now you're held responsible because you know and i just told you so so you ain't gonna have no excuse and unless your feet is hurting and you can't stand up for a long period of time they better not have to get up here and tell y'all that no more including me i'm just telling you and even if you can't stand up on your feet get up on your get on your knees do something in reverence who God is, reflection. Remember, you are a reflection. So we might not be able to see how our experiences with God change us over time, but our transformations will definitely not be a physical as, uh, you know, apparent as Moses is becoming a uh, beaming face. But when we spend time and surrender our lives to him more and more each day, we can reflect his love. We can reflect who he is. God can draw us closer to him as evidence of his presence shows in and through us. So our intimate moments spent with God can change us and it can direct others to his love. So the person next to you shouldn't look like they it is going through anything. You better be on your post and you better be doing what you're supposed to do. So when God moves, you move just like that. By faith and released by prayer, Daniel prayed and the mouths of hungry lions did not touch him all night. Moses prayed and the Red Sea parted. Elisha prayed and an entire army coming to harm him to take him hostage went blind. And he prayed again and all received their sight and therefore brought peace to both nations during his entire lifetime. What made the difference in every situation? They knew that with God, nothing is impossible. They understood that prayer is how miracles come to pass. In fact, Jesus took it to another level. He said to his disciples that even if you had faith, no bigger than a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and nothing will be impossible to you. 
Our nation needs mountain movers like never before to come together to humble themselves, to seek God, and to ask God to forgive our nation's sins so that we can be healed and restored. Because it will happen when the mountain movers come together to pray the prayer of faith. You want to be a mountain mover? Then join us at the House of Prayer, Friday, November 12th at 7 p.m., ending Saturday the next day at 7 a.m.